D-Lo, ay, yeah, clutch. I'm in the clutch, we in the clutch, it's even been clutch. You think that we suck, your dreams are the luck, your ship is just sunk, we turn off a way. Ooh, yeah, see that my face is up in disgust because people talking a mess, but there's nothing to discuss. I'm just being honest, I'm keeping it a bug. Uh huh. We in the clutch! What's going on, clutch? What? what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Duck. It's your boy Ross. And we are in the clutch. Hey, hey. back to the ladies and gentlemen of the video today. You feel me? Three text conversations with creepy backstories, man. Creepy. This should be an interesting one. We are back with another creepy style video. By Mr. Nightmare. Um, by Mr. Nightmare. Hopefully, he doesn't give you nightmares from this video. But uh, I think me and Dub, we decided uh, on the last Twitch stream uh, afterwards that... Um, we're gonna do a live stream uh, reaction, probably on YouTube, of some creepy videos. So be on the lookout for that in the it's upcoming weeks. Week. Uh, yep. I think you guys are gonna enjoy that. We can all watch some creepy style videos on YouTube together, man. And you know, it will we'll be safer in numbers. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I, I think this is gonna be a good one. So together. be on the lookout for that, man. Nah, for sure. But let's get into this right now, man. Let's see what kind of creepy. Things from text conversations yeah. with backstories. Oh boy, let's do it. What I'm about to show you in this video are uh -oh. three different sets of texts that become much scarier when you hear the background stories behind them. Oh boy, number three. Oh. In this first one, these are texts between a young girl named Emily and her mom. Emily sent me screenshots of these texts along with the background story to go with them. First, to read the texts, Emily says to her mom, Are you home? No, still with your dad. What's up? I heard someone come in. The house? Is Peter home? I don't know. I've been in my room. I don't think so because he was supposed to work till 12 tonight. Are you sure you heard the door open then? Mom, there's someone in the house. What? Who is it? Mom, I don't know. There's some man walking around downstairs. I'm scared. What do I do? Emily, find somewhere to hide right now. I'm calling the police. Lock your door right now and hide somewhere. First of all, Emily, you got a phone in your hand. The first thing y'all would have did was call the police. Call the police. Like, the first. In your room, okay? Okay, I'm in the closet. Okay, good, sweetie. I'm on the phone with the police. Don't make any noise at all. Stay in the closet until you hear the police come inside the house. Do you still hear them? Mom, he's trying to open the door. That's crazy. Emily, please just be quiet. You're going to be okay. The police are almost there. Emily, the police are there. Are you okay? This was where the texts ended. This was what was going on that night when Emily sent these texts to her mom. She was home alone while her mother was out to dinner with her dad and her older brother Peter was working late. Nobody was expected to be home except for her at this time, so when she heard the front door closing downstairs, she was immediately alarmed and concerned. She texted her mother asking if she and her dad possibly returned home early, to which her mother shot that down saying she was still with her father. On the side, sometime between her mom asking Emily if she was sure she heard the front door open and her follow-up question mark, Emily texted her brother Peter as well asking if he was home and he replied he was still at work. At this point, Emily peeked out her bedroom door down the stairs and saw in her words a 30-something-year-old tall man in a hoodie, beanie, and black sweatpants mm -mm. walking around her living room. At this point, she started to freak out and locked her bedroom door as quiet as she could and continued to text her mom. Upon telling her mom some stranger was in the house, the mom suggested Emily hide in the closet while she got on the phone with the police. While sitting in her bedroom closet trying to wait this nightmare out, Emily heard the man fiddling with the doorknob to her bedroom, trying to open the door, followed with him trying to forcefully break the door open by the sound of it. This was where Emily stopped replying to her mother, as she was too scared to even move a muscle in fear of being heard, even after the man gave up on the door. Police arrived and entered through the front door, which was unlocked, and they knew to go straight to Emily's closet. It was only then, when the police opened the closet door, that she felt safe to move. The intruder had stolen a number of valuables, but Emily was fortunate enough to have made it through this unharmed. Oh, that's dope. She called her mother while the police were there to let her know she was okay, and the parents returned home shortly thereafter. This is a perfect example of why you should always make sure all the entrances to your house are locked, Facts. especially at night or when you're home alone. Facts, bro. I do the double check every night, bro. I... Yep. I In got this to. next one, the following text between a little, girl uh -huh. who wishes to remain anonymous, who I'll just refer to as Amanda, a guy named Jake who she met a handful of times through oh friends, boy. And separate texts among Amanda and her friend Alyssa. Mm -mm -mm. It starts with Jake texting Amanda, hey, and this is how it goes. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, what about you? Same, want to hang out. Maybe, what do you want to do? I mean, we can't hang here because my parents are home, but what if I came to you? Are your parents home? Nope. So let me come, lol. When? 
I'm free now if that works for you. What made you even think to hit me up? You're really pretty and I just want to hang out with you. Okay, I look like a potato right now, so you have to give me some time to get ready. Wow. That's fine. What's your address? Word, I'll head over soon. Word. Wait, no, don't. I need time to get ready. The text between Amanda and Jake left off there, where he apparently left her text on red when she asked him not to come over just yet. At the same time, she went to go text her friend Alyssa about it, as Alyssa's part of the same friend circle as the two of them. Amanda was surprised to be hearing from Jake and texts Alyssa to see her reaction about it. This is how those texts went. OMG, he randomly hit me up, and he wants to come over. Are you going to let him? I told him yeah, but to let me get ready. He said he's going to head over soon. I told him wait, but he left me on scene. Wait, hang on. I feel like it's weird that he's texting you. I'm going to call him. Why? Don't mention me. I won't, but he's not picking up FaceTime anyway. I'm calling Jamie. This is weird. Why is it so weird? Because I know he wouldn't just text you like that. Immediately, Alyssa finds it surprising and odd that Jake would text Alyssa for the sole reason that Jake was apparently on the verge of officially dating someone else. Oh. When Alyssa tries to call Jake multiple times but fails, she then resorts to calling Jake's sister, Jamie, who was also part of the same friend group. All the while, Amanda is confused as to why Alyssa finds this all so weird. Alyssa's last text to Amanda was OMFG, before calling her revealing that Jamie told her over FaceTime that Jake lost his phone the day before and his Find My iPhone was disabled. Oh. They obviously quickly draw the conclusion that whoever was texting Amanda was not Jake. Jake then got on the phone with Amanda and told her that whoever had his phone was nobody that he knew because he lost his phone during his oh, morning run. No. Damn. The three didn't know whether it was just a prank or not until Amanda got a follow-up text from the person who had oh. Jake's phone saying, I'm here, I'm at the door. No! Given that Damn. the whole reason this person came over was because Amanda said her parents weren't home, meant whoever yep. was on the other side of the door likely meant her harm, and yep. they were aware she was a defenseless girl home alone. Yep. Amanda looked through the peephole of her front door, and there was someone in a hood standing on her front porch, looking at the peephole. Poop! Amanda sent one final text saying this, I know this phone was stolen, I called the cops already, they're almost here. You better get out of here and never come back or you'll be sorry. We also have you on video camera, so wave hello. The person read the text right away and didn't respond. The next time she checked through the peephole, the person was gone. Mm -mm -mm. Jake was able to get his IMEI number, and since it was being used for illegal activity, police helped track the phone to a man who lived a town over, who was prosecuted accordingly. Mm. And in this case, justice was actually served. That's yes! actually dope. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. See, See that, that, shit, that, 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 hey, that. I know a good deterrent. <laughs> <laughs> you you heard I text you. You heard that? You heard that? <laughs> you heard that? Let me do it again just so you click play. <laughs> you heard that? I don't have to tell you what that is, or I'll just send a uh, gift. I'll type it too. Click clack. Click clack, nigga. Well, come on, bro. See stuff like that, bro, is real <laughs> dangerous, man. Damn, that was crazy. Glad there was just a serve though. In this right. last one, these were the texts received by single mother Marissa Rivera. Marissa was awoken by her phone vibrating on her nightstand at 1 in the morning on a Friday night. Okay. On the screen were a bunch of texts from her son John. The text went as follows. Mom, I need help. I got into a car accident. Can you come pick me up? I think I injured my elbow. The damage is pretty bad. I don't know what to do. Please tell me you're joking. Are you okay? Yes, my elbow just hurts. Where are you? At the intersection of Robeson Street and Humphrey Lane by Longley Supply. Is Kevin with you? No, I'm alone. Okay, just stay there. I'm coming. That just seems weird. I was just Marissa started to get ready to go to her son's aid when she remembered he had location sharing on with her. Oh. So, wanting to make sure he gave the right location, she checked where her yeah. son's iPhone was located. She was taken aback when she saw John's location was at the house, not at this random intersection. Mm -hmm. She went to John's room, but he wasn't in his bed. So, she went and called her other son, Kevin, who was also still out. Kevin picked up his phone, sounding intoxicated, according to Marissa. What's up, Mom? When asked if Kevin was with John, right. he said yes, and John said hi, Mom, into the phone. Less drunk sounding than Kevin. The two were together and claimed there was no car accident and that John lost his phone. Marissa came to the horrible realization that if her kids were telling the truth, somebody else was in the house with her using John's phone. Marissa left the house with her cell phone and called the police while hiding in her car, reporting a breaking and entering. Police showed up and searched the house. Nobody was there. On top of that, John's phone location was updated to down the block, but that was the last known location before it was either turned off or broken. 
the office window of the house was the most likely entry and exit point, since according to Marissa, it's easily liftable and big enough for most people to fit through. Gotta fix that, bro. Fix Wait, what? It's easily liftable? And you know... Let's guess we're race. Marissa <laughs> was having a conversation with her sons while standing in the middle of the house, loud enough for whoever was in the house with her to hear her realization mm -hmm. that the car accident never happened and heard her rushing out of the house. What most likely happened here was somebody who knew John either stole or found his phone, broke into the house through the window, and tried tricking their mom into leaving, leaving the house yeah, so that so they that could rob the place can... while nobody was home. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, she called her other son and was able to realize it was some kind of setup, and she was able to get the police to the house. The family was never able to find out who was the one who sent the text mm. on John's phone. Perhaps another story illustrating the importance of having a passcode on your phone to prevent a stranger or anybody else from having complete access to it. Yeah, some and people don't have putting a lock on that window. Phone. Yeah, lock your windows, man. Yeah. Hey, this was this was uh, some definitely creepy ones. Uh, that's crazy, bro. How how you know just you being able to like really piece together things like wait a minute hold on i didn't send that sure. i didn't i yeah. didn't send you that message what what the hell's going on you know so hey make sure you check your locks and all mm -hmm. that stuff before you go to bed before you leave double check if you feel like you may have not locked the door go back, go back. And, and just double check i do it all the time i like you don't lock the door oh, no, if I'll you gotta ask just go back yeah and I, double bro, check. I don't care if if i'm up the street i'm like yeah, <laughs> double check. Do the do, do the little. Hold on. All right, cool. It's locked. And then going by my business. Same thing when it, I'm bro. going to bed, bro. I double check, triple check, because you can never be too safe. Bro. You can't, bro. Never people. Be too safe. There's always somebody out there trying to, you know, get you know get over and try to steal mm -hmm. something or harm you. So you always want to make sure you protect yourself. And hopefully they got that window fixed. Yeah, I hope so too. It's man. easy to just open it and come in. It's yeah, like nah, I don't even damn how fixed, safe man. of a neighborhood I'm in. I'm not keeping shit unlocked. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna have nope, windows I'm, just easily open. I have blinds. Accessible. I have all that. Noob, noob, noob. Yeah, noob, blinds. Noob. It's, bro, it's so many people that just don't like blinds. I'll be like, yo, you can see right into that. Yeah, I'm, I'm I, good, bro. I don't care. I how see it all the time. Safe like, the neighborhood is, bro. I'm good, bro. I'm good. But hey, if y'all enjoyed the video, man, you know what to do. Make sure you want to like, subscribe. Let us know if we need to be checking out more of these videos. Mm -hmm. Let us know by liking the video so we'll know this is what you guys like. But For sure. keep on spreading love, being love. Continue to keep God first. Catch y'all in the next video. In the clutch, we out. Already. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me cause I'm causing casualties But why are they after me? Deep inside they know they can't handle half of me